This is AP Precalculus. We're on notes for topic 3.7, sinusoidal function, context, and data modeling. So essentially, we're just kind of putting everything together that we've learned so far. So let's jump into some ex examples. So what is the period of F? So the period is how often it takes to repeat itself. So from zero and moving to the top right, you don't go back to zero because moving to the bottom right, you come to this zero, which is also moving to the top right. This total distance is two. Therefore, the answer for this period is just two. What about example two? Um, we have this cosine function, and we appear to have phase shift this time, uh, which of the following could represent the constant C. So I want to look at the phase shift. So cosine normally would start at a maximum. It should start up here and then do this, but it's not doing that. It's now starting at a minimum. So it either has to flip it upside down by making this a negative, which it's not doing, or we could phase shift it, which it clearly is doing. So we can kind of ignore the period. We can kind of ignore the minus one because those are already set. We already know that the period uh, is pi. The only thing that we need to figure out now is how do we move this thing in order to uh, have this point uh, move here, right? So normally a cosine function starts at a maximum. So the only two points that could be a start point are this point and this point. Those are the only two points, which means if I choose this point, that means my value of C is the opposite of negative pi over two and it is pi over two. So that is the correct answer. Another possibility is I have a negative pi over two because you take the opposite of pi over two, opposite just meaning multiplied by negative one, and the opposite of pi over two is negative pi over two. If negative pi over two was option E and that was negative pi over two, that also would have been an answer. But shifting by pi means you're right down here. You don't start cosine at a minimum. Pi over four would, uh, sorry, if it's pi it would have been uh, over here because that's a, a positive and you switch it, right? A pi over four would have been right here, which is still not a maximum, and zero would have been right there. So we needed to start at a maximum, therefore pi over two, this point right here, is the one that we wanted. All right, what about example three? So we've got a yo-yo now, and it's uh, 30 inches long as indicated be because it's in the text and because this length is 30. Um, we know at time is equal to zero that the yo-yo is beginning to rotate and is starting um, at that start position at the very bottom. And at time is equal to five, the yo-yo has completed 20 rotations. All right, so let's use this information right now to immediately construct our period. Um, because the period is the most important part of this question. Notice that all of the amplitudes are 30, all of them are sine. The only thing that's different here is what is the period. So I can kind of ignore everything in here and I'm can like focused and zeroed in on this one thing. So I have um, our period in general is um, how many things are happening per time. And generally speaking, we want that time to be one. So per one second would be ideal. And then number of things happening up here. So in this case, our period is 20 rotations um, in five seconds. In five seconds. Seconds. So, oh, and I, I am realizing that this is backwards, isn't it? Because period is a unit of time. I shouldn't be dividing by time. I, I super apologize here. I should really be saying this. It's time per things, and we usually want that as one second for, or I guess it's, we want the denominator to be one. Whoa, that's a eraser that's way too big. Let's come back here and say it's, it's one thing per uh, number of seconds. So I, I wanna, I'm curious what that number of seconds is because that's gonna be the period. So let's go ahead and rotate this one around as well. And we have seconds here. There we go. So we have five seconds per 20 rotations and that's going to be reduced to one over four. Um, seconds, seconds per rotation. Uh, if you ever get confused like me and you're trying to figure out, oh, is it time over things or is it things per time? Period by definition is a unit of time. Time needs to be in the numerator if you ever make the mistake. Okay, so we know that our period is one fourth. So if I know that the, I'll say it again, period is equal to one fourth. Therefore, I can use the equation for our sine and say that uh, period for our sine is going to be equal to two pi over b. And I happen to know what the period is. That period is one fourth. So I can say one fourth has to be equal to two pi over b. And then I can solve for b, right? So most people solve this uh, by cross multiplying. You can say b times one is b and four times two pi is eight pi. And there's our value of b, eight pi. The correct answer here is d because that's the one that has an eight pi in front of the t. And I'm just looking over here at my answer key, making sure that I got that one correct. I did get it correct. Yes, okay, example four. We've got a clock mounted to a wall. 
and we are going to represent um, that with a sine function. It has phase shift, it has period modulation, it has moving the midline up and down, and it has amplitude. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 70 and 52 are the maximum and minimum values. Okay, so let me draw a quick little picture here to help me out. So whenever I draw these pictures, this is not the y, or this is not the x-axis, it's not the t-axis, it's just the midline. So if you want to make a note, you can say that this is the midline. And I happen to know that if I'm given a maximum and then a minimum, I'm going to randomly put the, okay, well, not randomly, I guess zero is right here. So I'm gonna say maximum, and then it comes down to a minimum. And then I can kind of sketch out that function. So it's gonna go down like this and then back up, right? So I know that the coordinates here are, this is zero and 70. And then over here, my time is gonna be 30. And my height over here is gonna be 52. So I'm gonna say, 52. So the question is, what is this midline? Um, because D is the midline. That's one of the things I need to figure out, right? Well, this midline is always going to be the average of 70 and 52. So the way that you do average is you add those two numbers and divide by two. So I can say that our value of D is the midline is 70 plus 52. And then I just divide those by two. So 70 plus 52 is 122. And when I divide that by two, it's 61. So I know my value of D. Uh, now to find the value of A. So I can do that second. I can't really do it first because you kind of need the midline. The value of A is the amplitude. How much up and down did you go? Well, now that we know that this value of 61, we can go up to 70 by adding nine. So that means our amplitude is nine. Just as a uh, way to remember this, uh, sometimes amplitude can be negative. Um, if it starts at a minimum and then goes up, uh, for cosine, ooh, this is sine though. Um, for sine, I should be going up or down. So is this the correct answer? It could be a negative nine, depending on what they do for their phase shift. So we have to be careful here. Let's just go ahead and assume it's a positive nine. Um, there's no other way to do this unless we happen to know exactly what the phase shift was. So I'm gonna go ahead and ignore what point I was trying to make and let's move on to the next example. Example number five. We've got an average monthly temperature and there is the temperature um, of Indiana, of central Indiana. Um, based on the model, which of the following is true? Okay, let's read through these. The maximum, I think, okay, average monthly temperature is that equation. So I'm going to kind of ignore those words. The maximum is 61.2. Well, 61.2, I see that right here, but this is the equation of a midline. The, the maximum will go 25.7 more than the midline. So this is incorrect. This is the, I'll write a note here that this is the midline, not the maximum. If it had said that the average average monthly temperature is 61.2, I would agree with that. The maximum uh, occurs at one month. So if I plug in one, let's see if we get a maximum, right? Theoretically, the maximum should be here. I'll write it down. Our maximum should be 25.7 plus 61.2. Adding those together gives us 80. 6.9. We should have an, a maximum of 86.9. So if I plug that in, in fact, ooh, there's a trickier way to do it. You can just plug in m is equal to 1, and you can see what value we get at sine, because we know our trig values really well, right? I happen to know that a sine has a maximum up here at pi over 2, and it has a minimum down here at 3 pi over 2. How do I know that? Because sine is a y-coordinate. On a unit circle, how high, how, what is the maximum y-coordinate I can get? at the very top, the minimum, the very bottom. So if I can somehow make the inside here pi over two, it is indeed a maximum. And if I can somehow make, and I see a minimum coming up as well. If I can somehow make this inside be three pi over two, then it will be the minimum. So let's try it. M is equal to one. That means I'm gonna have, I'm just gonna look at the inside here. I'm rewriting the inside. I'm saying pi over six times m minus four. And the value of n that m that they're choosing is a one. 1 minus 4. Okay, so this is going to be a negative 3 in here. So I can write that down. That's a negative 3. And then negative 3 times pi over 6 is a negative 3 pi over 6, which is just a negative pi over, uh, I was about to write 6, 2. So negative pi over 2 actually goes this direction, clockwise, down here. So it's really interesting that m is equal to 1, we actually have a minimum down here at 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, which are the same values, essentially. So um, if this question had rewritten this and said minimum, it would have been true, but this is unfortunately saying a maximum, and that maximum happens at a minimum of one month. So incorrect, unfortunately, for B. What about C? The minimum um, monthly temperature is 35.5. Well, I don't know. The minimum is the midline, and then we're going to subtract the amplitude. So it's 60, and I'll, I can write down my work on what's going on here. This is going to be the minimum. The minimum is that midline uh, of... 61.2, and then I'm subtracting the amplitude of 25.7, and that's going to be 
what is that going to be? A uh, carry, so that's going to be a 30, 35.5, 35.5. And they're saying down here, oh, 35.5. The minimum is 35.5. Okay, so that is the answer. But we still need to know why is D not the answer? So again, in theory, if I can somehow plug in M is equal to 7 and I get a 3 pi over 2, it is a minimum. And maybe that should have been selected, right? Let's go ahead and check. So if I plug in M is equal to 7, in the same process as before, I'm only plugging into the inside up here. I'm going to plug in pi over 6, or I have pi over 6, times M, which is now 7. And I still subtract 4 because subtracting 4 again is part of the formula. 7 minus 4 is positive 3. So let me write down, this is now a positive 3. And 3 times pi over 6 is is 3 pi over 6, which is just pi over 2. So pi over 2, unfortunately, is up here, which is a maximum. They mix this one up. So if this one had changed the word from a minimum to a maximum, it would have been the correct answer, but it's not. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so this one we have some data modeling, which is kind of true to the lesson because this lesson is all about uh, data modeling, right? So in theory, I should be able to punch this into the calculator. Let's see if I need a calculator. Um, yep, 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 table gives... Uh, some values, and we're using a sinusoidal regression, which we've never done before. I don't know if I've ever done that before. Um, and 16 iterations used to model. What is the maximum number of uh, predicted by the model? Okay, well, I mean, just kind of looking at this thing, I don't even know if we need a calculator, right? The maximum seems to be 11.3, 11.4-ish. Oh, so it could be 11 or 12. Hmm. Well... Um, let, let's punch this in the calculator to see what it does, because it does say try to use a calculator with 16 iterations, right? I, I know for a fact it's not going to be A or B because I already see values up here that are bigger than 8 and bigger than 5, and we're looking for a maximum. I just don't know if it's 11 or 12. So let's go ahead and split this over and open up my calculator 84. Hopefully this does the same regression that you guys would do on your calculators. I'm going to go to my stat and then edit and type in 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12. And then over here for my next list is 11.4, and 11.3. Hopefully I typed those in correctly as I was saying them out loud. And then we're going to go to stat, and then we're going to go to the right to calculate. And then I assume if I scroll down long enough, I will find... Uh-oh, is it not there? A... Hmm... I don't know if this calculator has it. Well, that's kind of lame. Um, there should be a sinusoidal regression, but there is not a sinusoidal regression. So let's go ahead and cheat a little bit. I have to re-enter all that data in again, though. It's kind of lame. Um, here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do... Uh, not the scientific. I'm going to go to a graphing calculator, and it will do regression as well. I was doing a lesson on geometry a second ago. Okay, so let me type in that table as well. A table, please. And let me actually see what's going on here. Uh, I want you to be over there. Let's type in the following. One, three, uh, good guess, but now it's uh, four, then six, then seven, eight, 11, and I think the last one was 12. It is 12, okay. And then over here, it's gonna be 11.4, 9.7, 8.2, 9.8, 11.3, 11.4, Six point two, ten point five, and eleven point three. I didn't really need to do five point zero, did I? So what I can do now is I can click on this button in the top left, and I can drop this down and do a sinusoidal regression, and I've got a function. Cool. So according to this regression, let me go ahead and make this thing a uh, full screen so I can see what it's saying here. Oh my goodness. So um, if I write the equation. So I'm seeing that it is, can I make this even bigger? There we go. Um, my value of A is 3.1175, and then I have a midline of 8.21535. Uh, so um, if I take my midline and my amplitude and I add them together, that should be my maximum. My maximum is about 11.33. And over here we are saying, is it 11 or 12? Well, um, 11.33 is really close to 11. I assume that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, it's weird that we didn't get exactly 11 or exactly 12. Um, but yeah, there we go. I think that's the end of the notes for topic 3.7. The next one is 3.8. Yep. That concludes the video for 3.7. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.